There are also some guys who aren't free agents, but will dictate the market at a steep price. So let's keep the conversation rolling with the athletic senior writer, Kalen Kaler. Thank you for being here today, Kalen. Thanks, David. So we talked about the free agents out there for the Bears to consider, but these guys aren't, but they will dictate what they do and what other teams will do. Let's start with Aaron Rodgers because Aaron Rodgers, Lamar Jackson, and Daniel Jones, they were in the headlines the last couple of days. Aaron Rodgers welcomes the Jets to California. Are they interviewing him or is he interviewing them? Honestly, it's really interesting what's happened with Aaron because there's really only one team that we know of that is interested in Aaron Rodgers. And when I was at the Combine last week, I was trying to gauge if there was maybe a secret mystery team that we haven't heard from. And I talked to someone who is a quarterback needy team. He works for a quarterback needy team. And he was telling me it is only the Jets. So I don't think we're going to see a mystery team come out of nowhere. So, I mean, it's more it's more Aaron sort of interviewing the Jets to make sure he's kind of comfortable with that because the Jets, as we saw, Derek Carr went to the Saints and that was the other quarterback that they were linked to there so I think it's both of them trying to make sure that they're okay with the other one you also wonder if he cannot work it out with the Jets if he cannot find find a way to work for Woody Johnson if he can't work for Big Pharma Johnson and Johnson um, <laughs> does he retire because I don't know you talk the more people you talk to the, the less likely it seems that he's going to return to the Packers I agree with that for sure. And one thing that I think I've been wondering about Aaron in this whole process is we saw that last year he didn't go to OTAs, right? And that became a huge sticking point um, between him and the Packers this season as we saw they went on a late run that kind of proved to us that if he had showed up earlier, if he had spent that little extra effort with his new receivers, maybe they could have been establishing that chemistry earlier in the year. So it does make me question how much he still wants to well, play the game. That's got to be the first question right. they ask him, right? If you're sitting down with Aaron Rodgers and you're the New York Jets, do you still love football? Right. Are right. you committed to doing what's necessary to help make other people around you better in the way that you did earlier in your career? Right, and I think that's, that became the issue with Green Bay this year is they saw he wasn't as committed as he had been previously, and it showed up in their record this year. And I think that was a huge uh, kind of a breaking point in their relationship, and so that does make me consider, will he retire? Because I don't know that Green Bay trusts that he's going to come back and put in the work that he needs to. And the, other, the flip side of that, which I wonder about, is he's going to go to a new team. He's going to have to show up to OTAs. He's going to have to do the extra work. And he's been compared to Patrick Mahomes recently where Mahomes had new receivers this year. He does his own work with the offense during that OTA time period, gets them all to go to Texas, they gather together. Is Aaron going to do that work with a new team like the Jets? If the Jets don't work it out with Aaron Rodgers, you wonder if they will show interest in Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson tagged with the franchise label by the Baltimore Ravens. What has surprised me, Kalen, is not so much that happened, but how many teams have leaked the fact that we're not interested in Lamar Jackson. We're going to take a pass on a 26-year-old former MVP who has such a winning record. How do you explain that part of the story? So a lot of us in the media and fans, we don't understand and fully appreciate how against fully guaranteed contracts NFL ownership is. And the people who make these contracts, the, you know, your cap executives, your general managers, no one wants to touch a fully guaranteed contract with a 10-foot pole. And just because Deshaun did it last year, people look at that deal. I've talked to people across the league who look at that contract and think that is one of the worst contracts they have ever seen. And if you just look at Deshaun's first season, he didn't play very well. And there's still four more years of that. So you hope in Cleveland he's going to improve. And he, sh he probably will. But that's why these owners are so against that. And I saw players on Twitter saying, oh, a collusion. Everyone's alleging well, collusion. That's, that's, a, that's a dirty word in the NFL. But it certainly it smells like collusion. So I would say, yes, like it looks like collusion. But if you just think about the business of a fully guaranteed quarterback and then the business of the NFL, um, so, you know, injuries are why players deserve fully guaranteed contracts. He's because, a running quarterback. Because everybody, you know, right. gets injured in the NFL and the, and the careers are shorter. So that's why players deserve and want them. But that's the same reason why ownership doesn't want them. And then you have the funding rule where your team, your owner, has to put a majority of the money of the fully guaranteed contract into escrow, meaning they need to have it in cash. So a lot of owners will hide behind that as a reason why they'll say we don't have the money to guarantee it. 
Um, and just because, like, the collusion aspect of, of it is interesting. The NFLPA has a case right now where they are alleging collusion among owners for fully guaranteed contracts. But everybody I've talked to has kind of doubted that they have what they need to prove that case because inherently owners are against fully guaranteed contracts and they don't really need to sure. talk to each other and collude to make They can to agree wink and nod that. and everyone will get the point. Right. Question, how much do you think quickly that Lamar Jackson not having an agent has contributed to this? A ton. I think when you're on a rookie contract, you don't necessarily need an agent because things are pretty much spelled out for you, like what you're going to receive based off of where you are drafted. So not having an agent when you enter the NFL is not a big deal. At this stage in your career, when you are asking for a historic contract and you're sensing resistance and hearing the resistance very clearly from the team that you work for, you need someone as your go-between who can figure out maybe the things that you're not aware of and just act on your behalf. Before you go, let's quickly look at the middle tier of NFL quarterbacks, otherwise known as the Kirk Cousins level, and what yeah, he did yeah. for Daniel Jones everywhere, Geno Smith, those guys, they're getting paid, and they're getting the money that you didn't expect them to get. Yeah, the Daniel Jones, the Geno Smiths, the Derek Carrs, we saw them get 30 to $40 million per year in the contracts that they signed in the last couple days. So if that tells you anything about what the next quarterback's negotiating extension, so we're looking at Joe Burrow, we're looking at Justin Herbert, Jalen Hurts, who are obviously all elite. Justin Fields. Yeah, Justin Fields. In, One in day a few soon. years, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. So, I mean, that is that is the standard that has now been established, and I think we're not going to see lower than that for these quarterbacks that are in the teens of performance. Kaylin Kaler from the Athletic covers the NFL. Thanks for being here. Thanks, David.